Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. So now that we've outlined the nature of the problem and the seven primary causes of senescence, the next big question that arises is how will indefinite life come about? What will be the process? What will be some steps along the way? And I would like to emphasize, first of all, that the common perception of how immortality might come about is not really the way it's going to happen. That is, at no point in time will there be invented a single pill or elixir or medicine that will make the person who takes it functionally immortal. Rather, longevity will be increased incrementally, step by step. Indefinite life will not occur as a result of human beings at any point in time having an infinite life expectancy. Rather, what will happen is that life expectancy will increase faster than human beings age. Currently, according to inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil, whom I will mention later, we gain, on average, about three months of life expectancy every year. So as we get older by one year, medical technology and other factors in our lives progress to the point that we can expect to live another three months longer than we could before. But of course, because we had also lived one year of our lives, the net change in our life expectancy is negative 0.75 years. But what is going to happen if the rate of medical and scientific progress and perhaps societal progress so that we have fewer wars, fewer accidents, fewer other kinds of catastrophes and natural disasters, what if that rate becomes so fast that life expectancy will increase every year by more than one year? This means that the longer we live, the greater a life expectancy we're going to have. So just by surviving into the future, we can guarantee increasingly longer lifespans, and that in effect will be indefinite life. If we can survive to that threshold where life expectancy will begin to increase faster than we age or senesce, then we could at least get indefinite life. We would, of course, as individuals still have to be very careful not to die untimely deaths and wait for times when safety will be improved as well as medical technology so that the probability of dying an untimely death will be decreased. Now, of course, these improvements to human longevity will not come all at once. They will come gradually and incrementally, and indeed, many of them have already come about. Remember, uh, the life expectancy of a human being without any kind of technology during hunter-gatherer times, during the Paleolithic era, was anywhere from 20 to 30 years. Now, it's in the high 70s and in the low 80s. Certainly, we have come a long way. And as more diseases are cured, as various kinds of treatments and rejuvenation therapies are developed and marketed, that life expectancy will increase incrementally. And I believe it will increase at an accelerating rate because all of the discoveries of the past and of the near future will also fuel the discoveries of the more distant future. So some of the earlier immediate stages of this transition to indefinite life will involve experimentation on other mammals to show that life extension in those mammals is feasible. Indeed, efforts have already been well underway in this direction through the Methuselah Foundation and the Methuselah Mouse Prize. Uh, this is the brainchild of Dr. Aubrey de Grey, whom I mentioned in the previous video in this presentation. So the aim of the Methuselah Mouse Prize is to convince the general public that life extension in mammals by significant amounts 
is technically feasible. And if a lot of the general public and a lot of investors are convinced, then there will be much more funding available for research on human life extension. So there are two kinds of prizes under the umbrella of the Methuselah Mouse Prize. There's the longevity prize for making mice live as long as possible, and then there's the rejuvenation prize, where you take mice that are already fairly advanced in their age, and you try to make them biologically younger, and thereby extend their life expectancy. And we already have had remarkable accomplishments in that field. Now, it's important to keep in mind that mice live on average for about two to three years. So let's say, roughly, that three years is about 100 mouse years. Now, the current winner of the longevity prize is uh, Dr. Andre Bartke. Dr. Bartke has been able to get mice to live for 1,819 days. That is the record holding mouse right now. That's 4.98 years, almost five years, or about 166 and two-thirds mouse years. Can you imagine how phenomenal it would be if we could get a human being to live for 166 and two-thirds years? Well, it's now possible in mice relative to typical mouse life expectancy. And the current rejuvenation prize is held by Dr. Steven Spindler, who through techniques of caloric restriction took mice that were about 19 months old, a little more than 50 mouse years old, and got them to live on average 1,356 days. That's approximately 123.83 mouse years. So imagine taking a human being who's a little over 50 and through some kind of rejuvenation therapies, first of all, making that human being 15 to 20 percent younger to start with, and increasing that human being's lifespan to an average of over 120 years. That's absolutely remarkable, what has been done in this field so far. And of course, research continues. There are numerous teams who are competing to break these records, and I wish them all the very best. And of course, we cannot predict the precise path that life extension is going to take. If we could predict it fully, if we could explain it in full technical detail, then we would be able to do it right now, and the problem would be solved. But, as we can see, there is an overarching strategy, there's a general plan, there's a general idea of what might happen. And also Ray Kurzweil, who is an inventor and futurist who has won numerous awards of the highest caliber, he has developed a lot of software, a lot of artificial intelligence work, a lot of uh, wonderful quality musical instruments, and a lot of technologies that have aided the disabled in living fuller lives. He predicts a gradual merger between human intelligence and artificial intelligence and a combination of the relative strengths of the two. So certain aspects of computers are going to be incorporated into human minds and human bodies. For instance, the ability to crunch a lot of very routine calculations very quickly. Computers can do that, we can't. Uh, but however, we can do a lot of qualitative processing of ideas much better than computers. Computers, at least at this stage, aren't very much inclined toward intelligent and creative argumentation, even though some of them are getting there. So an integration of human capacities and computer capacities would lead to much more intelligent beings. And these would still be us with our consciousness. It's just we would be enhanced in our abilities. And these beings, of course, we would be able to invent new technologies at a much faster rate than humans currently can, even with the help of computers who are separated from them. So as a result, we can expect an acceleration of the rate of progress in extending human lifespans. So that's a very hopeful uh, pathway by which indefinite life extension can occur. And I wish all of these innovators, these scientists, the entrepreneurs, and the visionary thinkers all the best in defeating this greatest foe of humanity.